Hello, I'm Joel with Power Stance Import Export. And if you came across this video through an eBay listing, thanks for watching. That's what these videos are for. But if you happen to stumble across it through a random YouTube search or suggestion, uh, also thanks for stopping by and checking us out. If you have any questions about the vehicles, if you've ever wanted to buy a Land Rover Defender, all of these are for sale. Uh, and we are one of the largest suppliers of Land Rover Defenders in Michigan and most of the Midwest. So uh, you can call us at the number listed below, or you can also find us on Facebook or Instagram at Power Stance Import Export. Oh, and up for sale today, I've got two Land Rover Defenders, both of them in Coniston Green. Both of them are 110.5 doors. This one on my right is a 1996 with the 300 TDI, and this one on my left is a 1990 with the 200 TDI. I'm putting them both together in the same video in case somebody's looking at the 200 TDI and they decide, oh, maybe I want the 300. Or they're looking at the 300 TDI and they decide, oh, I like the boost alloys instead. Um, okay, so both of these vehicles are gonna be priced at the same price um, and both of them require about the same cosmetic work uh, and both of them are running and driving good, but they're, they're what I would consider project vehicles. Um, okay, so, Let's point out some of the differences here. On the 300 TDI, um, we've got 124,000 miles on this engine. 200 TDI has got 160,000 miles. This has the LT77 five-speed, which reverse is to the left and up. And this has the R380 gearbox, which is reverse to the right and down. Um, we've got checker plating on the wings here. We've got bonnet mounted spare capabilities here. We've got flat black wheel arches, original and stock. We've got painted wheel arches here to match the body. Um, the tires on the 200 TDR are general grabbers, uh, a little bit more trail friendly and street friendly compared to the Cooper STTs, Cooper Discoverers, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more better in the mud. Um, uh, 16 inch five spoke Defender Boost Alloys. They're stylish, but a little bit lightweight, a little bit less heavy duty than the 16 inch steel wheels, Wolf wheels, which are heavier, but also can take quite a beating. Um, 300 TDI has got a roll cage, exterior and interior. 200 TDI, no roll cage, no lights, no roof rack. Just streamlined classic Land Rover. Coniston green, Alpine white roof, Boost Alloys, classic Land Rover. Um, we do have uh, light protectors on the front here. Both of them have stock bumpers, stock lights and signals and grills, uh, stock hoods, bonnets, nothing aftermarket going on there. Uh, so let's walk you around the vehicles and we'll show you each one individually and take both of them for a test ride. Put them head to head. Okay, starting off here with the 1996 300 TDI. Um, so the bulkhead is in fantastic shape. All right. Few dents in the hood or the bonnet, which is typical. People like to stand on those. Um, no dents in the front wings, which is good. We do have some corrosion pretty much spread out over the whole vehicle. The hinges, the door skins are actually pretty decent on this side. A um, little bit of corrosion here. Um, so the interior door frames okay that one's pretty decent a little bit of rust on the bottom here passenger side middle row a little bit of rust repair there and some body filler here so the doors are not that great but they're functional they do shut properly okay moving on to the back a little bit of rust on the cappings. A little bit of corrosion here on the top as well. In the back corners here. Definitely some corrosion there. Rear door. Good thing is the rear doors are not expensive. Those are easily replaced. And there's also a little bit of rust on the bottom of the rear door. Rear cross member, however, is in great shape. It looks like it's new because it's got the uh, uh, trailer hitch plug there. So that's a newer cross member. We got new carpet here in the back, new seats. Those are nice and fresh. There's the rear roll cage. Headliner, not too bad. 
full size spare on the door. Again, there's some corrosion on the cappings and the corners, a little bit of corrosion. Bit of a dent and a scratch here at the back. And then again, some body filler on the middle row doors. A little bit of rust on the bottom. There's the middle row seats. All right, these are aftermarket. I think these are Exmoor trim high back seats. So that was like $1,500 option right there. So that's kind of nice. Okay, here we have the military badge, which is kind of cool. There's the contract number. And there's also a special vehicles badge under the hood. Again, driver's side door. It's been repaired. Not too bad. And on the outside, actually the skins on the driver's side are a little bit worse condition than the passenger side. A little bit of corrosion on the doors. Okay, under the bonnet here, here's the special vehicles badge. Well, that's pretty cool, I think. Uh, there's the 300 TDI fuel pump. There's the back side of the foot wells. There's definitely a little bit of rust on there. Not too, too bad. Passenger side foot wells, pretty decent shape. Sound deadening material under the bonnet. A little bit worn and torn but the bonnet itself is in pretty good shape. Usually this is where they rust out. All right, let's take a look underneath. Here's the front swivels, front ball joints. They look pretty decent. Not too bad actually, and this has been rust proofed recently. There's the bottom of the engine. A little bit of oil coming out of the uh, oil pan. Moving on here to the back. Here's the rear cross member. So it looks like somebody has welded in a patch in here to enclose the rear cross member so that it doesn't get mud, which I've never seen before. So kind of a, a nice fix. So it prevents mud from getting stuck back in there. Um, a few patches actually on the chassis. Um, this is a patch right here. And this is where they cut and welded the new rear cross member newish i would say within the last 10 years and on here to the driver's side same deal this is where they cut and welded the rear cross member and then they have enclosed the rear cross member and so that mud doesn't get trapped in there um, the welding is not that great um, but it looks like it's kind of watertight and we've got a nice liberal coating of chassis paint on here. Here's the bottom. There's the e-brake. A little bit of oil coming out of the uh, transfer case, gearbox. And uh, here's the bottom of the chassis. Pretty good shape, except for the rear cross member with the patches, but everything else looks pretty tidy. Okay, and lastly, here's the 1990 200 TDI Defender 110. Again, uh, bulkhead is in pretty decent shape. There's a little bit of a bubble there from corrosion, but not too bad. I've definitely seen worse. The paint is in decent shape, um, but again, there's, there's corrosion on uh, most surfaces here and there and uh, the doors door bottoms there's some corrosion down there as well um, good thing is the door skins themselves are pretty reasonably priced pretty easy to replace so we got a repair down here uh, some body filler looks like so that might need to be welded and here's the middle row door okay we definitely have had a patch here so this this door is in pretty rough shape it's got a hole in the bottom here um, but again functional opens and shuts it's actually pretty straight uh, a little bit of corrosion here right in front of the wheel arch while we're down here let's take a look at the rear cross member 
a little bit of patching on the bottom here that's normally where they rust out so that has been repaired all right moving on to the back a little bit of corrosion there at the corners the cappings are pretty decent tiny bit of rust there so not as much corrosion on the corners as, as the 300 TDI, which is strange because this is an older vehicle. But, you know, sometimes they're garage, sometimes they're not. A little bit of corrosion here at this corner. Let's take a look at the back. Carpet's pretty clean back here. These look like to be original seats. This is the original cloth. Rear cross member. See, this one does not have um, the trailer hitch plug in it, so that's an older style rear cross member. But no holes in it, no rust. There's the back side. Pretty decent looking. Seems to be a patch, or that's maybe where they cut and welded a new one on, newish. I think that's what that is. That's, this rear cross member has been replaced. So that's a weld there. So the chassis on the 200 TDI is in a little bit better shape, I would say. Not as many patches on this one. Um, but again, it's got corrosion on the doors and on the, the skins. Windows are in decent shape, seals are in decent shape. Front door, another repair panel here interior like i said all original which is nice i like the look of the original seats middle row bench seats headliner nice and clean a little bit saggy though here's the engine bay foot wells they got a little bit of surface rust, but they're not in bad shape. And look what we got here. That, ladies and gentlemen, is an air horn. So let's give that a little tootle. <laughs> yep. So we got 160,000 miles on the odometer. Let's focus here. There we go. Here's the foot wells. Original carpet, too. That's kind of cool. All right, so now let's take them for a test drive. But before we test drive, let's take a look at the underside. Okay, swivels, they're actually pretty clean. Uh, a little bit of surface rust on the axle here, but swivels look nice and clean. Bottom of the engine, kind of hard to see with that steering guard in the way, but uh, pretty dry, actually. And there's the driver's side swivel. You know, it could use bushings here and there and and ball joints and whatever steering dampener is toast. Um, but, you know, the jack points are in decent shape. Bumper is nice. And let's take a look at the underside, the middle of the chassis. Okay, outriggers are in good shape. And again, typical little bit of oil on the transfer case. Let's see if we can get a good look at the underside of the... There's the oil pan. It's actually pretty dry. So I'd say the uh, sump gasket's been done recently. And there's the bottom. The exhaust looks good. Suspension looks pretty stock. But yeah, chassis looks to be in pretty decent shape. Okay, so let's go ahead and take it for a little rip. Uh, we'll go through the gears. I'll show you the steering and the braking and acceleration. And she fires right up. All right, windshield wipers are working. It's a little rainy out right now. That's first gear. Second gear. Stuff, window seals, 
rattling a little bit. So accelerating in third gear downshift. sits right in the middle where it should. Good running unit. Okay, so now let's take out the 200 TDI. Again, starts up nice and easy. So um, right off the bat, I can tell the gearbox in this is a little tighter, a little more uh, Swiss watch-like, if you will. Windshield wipers are on, gauges are working. First gear, second gear, third gear. and flashers test so we got the running lights on driving lights on signals rear tail lights are on this one is out this one's working license plate lights working tail lights are working on the 200 tdi flashers are working okay and since you stuck with me till the end here we got a little treat um, we're going to do a decibel reading on the 200 TDI versus 300. So this is the 200 TDI. Right at 79 decibels. And here we have the 300 TDI. Actually a little bit louder. Alright, there you go. 